Hey friends, so now I'm gonna show you a sheet sheet where we're gonna cover 30 things, functions, methods, operators that we can use in Python data structure lists and we're gonna do the whole thing in just few minutes. So are you ready? Let's go. The first thing we can do is how to access a list and you can go and pick directly one by using parentheses and specifying the position number. So we call this indexing, you are getting exactly one item. But if you want to get multiple items, we have to use something called slicing. So if you specify the start and the end, you can cut exactly how much you need. And another thing that we can do to our list is to unpack it. That means we're gonna split all the items into multiple values. So in one line in one go, you are assigning multiple variables to the values of your list. And in Python, we have a lot of built in functions that can help us to explore and analyze the data. Like, for example, if you want to find the highest value in a list, then you can use max or you can do the opposite where you are searching for the lowest value using the function min and another one if you want to find out how many items do we have inside the list and for that we use the function length or we can check our list by finding out whether there are any missing values by using the function all all values must be true in order to get it true and the opposite where it is more relaxed we have the any it's gonna check if at least one true in our list and as well we have other methods that's gonna help us to analyze our list like the count it's gonna tell us how many times an item appears in our list another method called index in order to find out where exactly we can find our item the position number and as well, we could use operators in order to analyze our list using the in operator. So we are asking, is this item member of our list or not? And we can as well change our list. Like, for example, we can use the method append in order to add an item to the end of our list. Or you could use the method insert in order to put them exactly where you want by specifying the index. And now if you want to remove all the items, you want to hit the reset button, you can use the method clear in order to remove everything. But now if you want to remove only one thing, you can use the method remove. So here we can remove by specific value or you can go and use the method pop in order to remove by position number. By default, it's gonna remove the last item. But of course you can specify exactly which position should be removed. Now, if your list is chaotic and messy, we can sort it like using the method sort if you want to sort everything alphabetically or numerically from lowest to the highest, or you can use the method reverse if you want to flip the list around. So the first item gonna be the last one and the last item gonna be the first one. Now we come to something confusing where you want to create a copy. The first option we can use assignments if you want to point two different variables to the same list. So any change gonna affect directly both of your variables but if you want to have like a real copy then you can use the method copy so that you're gonna end up having two variables pointing to two different lists this is more safe especially if you have like very simple list but if you have nested lists this will not work because this gonna create a shallow copy so only the first level is separated but all the children's are shared that's why we have another method called deep copy where everything all the levels gonna be isolated in a real copy okay moving on in real words usually we have a lot of lists and we would like to merge them all in one list so you could use the plus operator in order to combine two lists and you generate brand new list in the output this is really nice if you want to keep the originals but if you don't want a new list you would like to extend one of them we have methods called extend so it's gonna go and stretch and add one list with the items of another list so the only difference here is one creates something new and the other just extends expand what is there now next thing's gonna get more advanced for example we have a function called zip it's like a zipper it's gonna go and connect items from multiple lists into pairs so the first item with the first item the second with the second and so on and another nice function we have enumerator it's gonna go and automatically adds an index number for each item of your list so it's pairing the values with their index now we come to something serious and very powerful in real projects we have a function called map it's gonna go and apply a function a data transformation 
for every single item inside our list like for example changing all the letters to a lowercase or to an uppercase or doing some casting so we are applying a data transformation for all the items and another function which is very similar called filter you're gonna define your condition your rules and python gonna keep only the items that fulfilling your condition and anything that is not meeting the requirements it's gonna be filtered out and now we come to the last one the most elegant solution from python you can combine data filtering and data transformation into one line so that means we're going to use two rules you're going to define the filtering and then you're going to do the data transformation so it's like both filter and map function in one so that's it those are the 30 things functions method operators that we can use in Python data structure lists. And I think you can go and print this cheat sheet and each time you are dealing with data structure, you can use it. And by the way, if you like this type of content learning visually, then check my channel. All my stuff are using animated sketches. And if you want to support my work, then subscribe, like, and comment in order to grow the channel and to push more on me to make content. So thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.